What's going on guys, it's Dramon, and you guys asked for it, so here it is, the performance review for the D-Row 7. Let's get started with the traction, and Adidas is using what they call smoke traction, but all you really need to know is, this is one of the best traction setups that I've ever used. Not an inch of space is wasted on the outsole, and you're gonna feel instant gratification on every cut, hard stop, jab step and quick turn. This traction is gonna grip the floor about as well as you could possibly imagine, allowing you to move from one move to the next without any delay. And even though dust will get caught in between the grooves because the pattern is pretty tight, it still performs at a high level because I only had to wipe once maybe every two hours. And it's a real shame that the rubber compound isn't more durable because had the Rose 7 been more outdoor friendly, this would have been the best traction setup of all time. The boost in the Rose 7 provides a more firm and stable ride, identical to what we saw in the Crazy Light Boost 2016. I didn't like it then, and I don't like it now. That's not me saying it's a bad cushion setup because the boost used here still absorbs a tremendous amount of impact. I just don't understand why anyone would want boost that doesn't boost you. You're not gonna get that feeling like you're running faster or jumping higher like you did with the Crazy Explosive or even Rose 6, but if you value court feel and prefer a more stable ride, the Rose 7 should definitely be on your radar. Adidas constructs the materials in the Row 7 in a way that adds more structure and durability without sacrificing the comfort that usually comes with woven uppers. The prime net upper is backed by two layers of mesh and features a tight weave which makes the Row 7 less prone to rips and tears and there are also thin fuse overlays and high wear areas that provide added durability but the synthetic leather overlays in the midfoot do most of the hard work. Now the ankle and tongue are injected with a firm foam but once you get past a short breaking period period, everything softens up and provides a comfortable experience. These are the most durable out of the top three Encore models from Adidas, so if you're looking for something that'll last you a while and has a lot of structure and support, you can't go wrong with the Row 7. After experiencing the best fit that I've ever had with any Adidas model in the Crazy Explosive, the Row 7 takes a huge step back. First of all, I had to go down half a size. My true size was too long. So getting a size 10 brought things back to normal lengthwise, but that just made the midfoot way too tight and didn't allow the wing overlays that are integrated into the lacing system to do their job properly. I never truly felt secure during my time in the row seven and I was constantly readjusting, trying to find that perfect fit, but it just never happened. There was also just enough dead space directly behind my heel to distract me and that's just the last thing I wanna think about while I'm on the court. And at the end of the day, the row seven's fit is uneven at best, but I do believe that if you have the right kind of foot shape, the row seven will fit you perfectly. But for me and my slightly wide foot, the row seven just didn't add up. Moving along to the support, this is the most supportive model in Adidas' Encore lineup and that makes up for the sloppy fit just a little bit. Those synthetic leather overlays that I talked about in the material section do a great job of keeping your foot in the right place during those hard cuts and stops while an external heel cup keep your heel from shifting side to side, provided that the fit in this area works for you. So if you're looking for something with a lot of support that doesn't feel overwhelming or bulky, the Row 7 is an excellent option, but if you're looking for the reverse and something that feels free and minimal, but also provides the necessary support you need, I would look at models such as the Crazy Explosive. So overall, other than the traction, which again is one of the best setups of all time, I really can't recommend the Rose 7 over the Rose 6. Sure, the cushion setup isn't as spongy as it is in the Rose 6, but players who are looking for a more supportive model like the Rose 7 usually prefer bouncier cushion setups. And even though the Rose 7 has enough durability in the materials department, the rubber compound is extremely pliable, making it a non-option when it comes to outdoor use. But hey, if you're digging how the Rose 7 looks and you wanna get them, don't be afraid of this review because while the cushion and fit were disappointing to me, they may work perfectly for you. The boost use here just isn't my preference as I prefer a more plush, bouncy ride and the fit may just be an isolated issue thanks to my unique foot shape, but your foot shape, which is equally as unique, may just slide right into the row seven like Cinderella slipper. What we can agree on is that the row seven has a great support system that is suitable for all types of players and play styles, but it is my least favorite out of the top three Encore models from Adidas, but that's only because Adidas has been killing it this year. 
Anyways, guys, that pretty much takes care of the performance review for the d row 7. If you have any lingering questions, type it down in the comment section below. You got my word. I'll answer you as fast as I can. The next performance review is on the Under Armour Clutch Fit Drive, so stay tuned for that. My name's Jaren. Catch you in the next one. Peace. This is one of my favorite uppers on the market. It's soft, it's comfortable, and surprisingly durable for a woven upper, but it's bouncy, it's explosive, and it has that boost feel that was lacking in the Crazy Light 2016. So if you like the D-Row 6 cushion setup, you're gonna love the Crazy Explosive. 